Hi guys. Look at all the drops that are there on these twigs and all the moisture that is there on these leaves. It did not rain. Right? It's all dew. It's uh, about 5:36 a.m. in the morning. And uh, every branch, every twig, every leaf has a lot of moisture. And it's all condensation of the dew. And that you can see this particular drop. Let me focus on that. That particular drop, you can see the color of it. It's brown. You see that? Let's talk about that. It's the middle of the October now and already we are having a lot of dew. Uh, in hot climates, this dew is so important. Uh, it, it adds so much moisture to the plant that it, it actually counts uh, on par sometimes with the rainfall that is available. In deserts, even in cold deserts, the condensation drip, the condensation dew, is very very valuable for the survival of plants and animals. There are, I'll tell you a little story here. There are there, there are these Pacific Islands called Canary Islands, Canary C A N E R Y Canary, and there is no fresh water source traditionally on the on those islands. And the people who used to uh, the the people who used to stay there from centuries ago, they used to have these huge trees with lots of you know wide arbor and the sea breeze would contain a lot of moisture and uh, when it gets cold in the mornings and stuff all that moisture gets onto these leaves I am standing in front of my pigeon pea tree here and the rain tree the, the rain tree is approximately of the similar shape but of a large size now all those drops will get collected and they form a drip right and large trees the end of this the edge of the canopy is called the drip line the condensation drip line, all the drops fall there. So on those islands, the, the Canary Island, uh, Islanders put up stone canals to collect all that water and lead it all the way into wells from which they used to use, uh, uh, you know, they used to get water for all their uses. So in hot climates, in deserts, even in climates like mine, which is semi-arid, the condensation drip adds a lot of moisture to the whole farming and to, to the whole ecosystem. When you look at a leaf, uh, it seems so small, right? But if you look at it under a microscope, the leaf is really inundated, you know, with small crevices here and there, microscopic crevices. They say that a large tree, if you spread all those inundations out, all those folds out and spread it out, it's up to 40 acres of surface area. And all of that is interacting with the atmosphere, absorbing uh, moisture if the plant needs it. So when you are doing this kind of a system where you are not uh, very keen on dumping boreal water onto your farm and saltifying it and losing out aquifers, when you are using water minimally, each of, this, each of these drops counts, right? If this plant needs that extra moisture, it's going to absorb that. As soon as sun rays hit it, it's going to suck all that moisture into itself, reducing the necessity for watering the plant. So it's a very important uh, part of uh, you know the water cycle on your farm. And uh, come October, you want to make sure, right? Come December actually, when the real fog starts. This year it was, uh, it's a bit early, but uh, November, December it starts here. By the time you want your surface area of your farm, the leaf surface area of your farm maximized to capture as much of this as possible. Now in the earlier little clip, I also showed you a drop of dew that was brown in color and that's also very important. What a tree does is it mines nutrients. It takes nutrients from deep within, which are sol you know, soluble in water, brings it all the way to the leaves, to the stems, etc. And when the, when, during the afternoon, when the water evaporates, all those minerals are deposited on the surfaces of leaves. So what is happening is that this dew is washing all of that onto the top of your soil. So it's actually your own uh, micronutrient trace element 
drip, right? Fertigation. Your soil becomes so much better because of these, you know, drops that fall off. They contain a lot of good nutrition for the soil, and that's one other way in which the nutrient is cycled via trees. So you want to maximize that on your farm if you really want to do soil building and get your farm fertile. You know, imagine a crop full of aubergines or corn. What is that? Flat. right you want to have high tall you know trees through which the moisture can go the air can go and moisture can condense if you have flat fields actually you can observe this the fog will stop about 2 feet above the flat layer of plants uh those guys who are getting fog next time get on, get into the farms you know get onto the highway get onto the road go to the fields and just look at that What you'll see is that around 6 a.m., 5:36 a.m., before just before the sun hits, you'll see all the fog getting onto the farms. But you can see that it is not really touching the plants because the plants are warm, right? The condensation potential is far less for you know things like uh, brinjals and stuff like that, which are only about three feet tall all the way along, with trees and shrubs and lots of leaf area and. with for for air to go through and condense all that moisture you need all these varied shapes and varied types of plants you want to do that in your farm if you really want to improve your soil and reduce the water load of your farm particularly for your trees with that tip dj signing off have a great time keep on learning permaculture thanks for watching it effect permaculture